For several years now, each January, we have held an event to mark the liberation of Auschwitz, the largest Nazi death camp of the Second World War. Today, we remember the millions of Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the most horrific episode of the war. The Nazi policy of eradicating and destroying any deviation from what they considered the norm defied the basic human principle that life is precious and that race, religion, disability and sexuality can contribute to make a better place for all. We should never forget other minorities who also suffered enormously at the hands of the Nazi. The Roma and Sinti groups and those with physical and learning disabilities. We should also not forget the killing of millions of people in subsequent genocides, such as those in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Myanmar. Genocidal regimes throughout history have deliberately fractured society by marginalizing certain groups, using tactics and propaganda to stereotype their members. The theme for this year's event is One Day. Standing in the green, peaceful surroundings of the Barra Gardens, with its clean and fresh air, it's easy to forget the trouble of the past decades and even those which continue today. In this hour, on this one day, I am free from any fear or persecution, whereas other people on one day had their dreams and plans for the future completely shattered losing families, friends, and even countries. Through persecution and bombardment, homes and the ancient civilization have been destroyed. History, culture, and even languages have been lost. My dream is that one day, our communities will come together and differences in race, religion, color, ethnicity, gender, or nationality will be something to applaud and not fear. One day, we'll stand together to show compassion for all minority groups and combat the racism which sometimes divides communities. We will open our hearts and mind to accept these differences which enrich our lives and make us stronger. One, One day can change a person's life forever. Let us make it a change for the better. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day. A promise was made. This tragedy would never happen again. But what is a promise anyway? If broken, it arises once again. The damage done, like a promise, is irreversible. One day, we said, this will never happen again. But tragedy after tragedy, these events carried on. A promise broken each time. The words echo in our heads, this will never happen again. One day, Millions died because of their ethnicity, religion, or even if they laughed or cried. When will this loop stop? Day after day, people live in fear, wishing it was truly never again. Genocide. Half a word, I thought. Covering the deaths of millions in eight letters. Genocide. Raphael Lundkin came up with that word. He suffered the Holocaust and witnessed death firsthand. It's an utterly grotesque topic. The power balance between life and death is ruined when so many lives are ended so abruptly. Cambodia. 
1975-1979. Two million dead, so quickly, for no reason. Duffer, 2003 to present. 2.6 million, still displaced. Racist beliefs. Why does everything have to revolve around power? In this world, righteousness is ignored. One day, we will come to understand the consequences of the abuse of power. One day. Friends, people of all races, I'm here to talk about the devastating genocides that have happened over the years. After each terrible event, people say it will never happen again. It does, and it's still happening. In Cambodia, millions were killed just because they were doctors, lawyers or teachers. If people were educated and showed it, they would be shot. The civil war in Darfur has killed millions and it's still going on today. People all over the world are still being persecuted due to their race, beliefs or gender. One day, if we make the change, it will stop. It's time for us, for our generation, to say that we will not tolerate intolerance any longer. We rejoiced at the end of the civil war, but then the tears began to fall. A field of dreams shattered overnight, now a field of despair and fright. I sensed your fear, snatched from my grasp of rivers of tears, too afraid to show how much I care. I never forgot your haunting stare. Children were snatched and people blinded, our human rights taken, we were constantly reminded. Our lives are forever scarred, survival important or blown hard. Millions murdered, generations lost, and still we must pay the cost. We walk, we talk, we must unite. I will never give up without a fight. To be as free as a bird in the sky, they may break our bones, but our hope will never die. We shall never forget the history of the fields, a place of horror, never quite healed. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day, the 11th of July, 1995, a tragedy began in the small town of Srebrenica. By its end, more than 8,000 Bosniaks were murdered by Ratko Mladic's Bosnian Serb army in areas where they had been promised safety. That night, 15,000 Srebrenica people fled into the mountains to escape this senseless atrocity. 6,000 more were hunted down and murdered, leaving a legacy of pain for those who left behind. Many of their bodies have never been recovered. One day in July 2005, the people of Srebrenica came together to honour their legacy in a unique commemoration. The community, young and old, men and women, marched for three days from the town of Nezuk to Srebrenica, through the forests and along the tracks across which so many fled 10 years before. The event is known as the Peace March, or Marsh Miro, and has become one of Bosnia's most prominent examples of peaceful reconciliation. By retracing the steps of those lost, the community is able to be closer to them and reflect on the sorrow of their memories before reaching the march's end at the Srebrenica Genocide Memorial. For those that remember the summer of 1995, the march is a poignant tribute to their loved ones. For the young, it allows them to understand the experience of their community. Today, the march includes more than 81,000 people and has become internationally significant as a symbol of peaceful reconciliation and is conducted every year in July. One day in 1995, Srebrenica saw a tragedy. One day in 2005, its people chose to remember those lost and to reconcile since then, the Peace March has cast a ray of light into a dark past, ensuring that the Srebrenica genocide's memory will never be lost. One day. One day. One day. I can tell you about that one day, the 2nd of August, 1944. They rounded up the 2,897 Roma and Sinti that were left in the camp 
They were mainly old people, women and children. They were burning them in the ovens and when the oven, this, there was too many to go in the ovens and they were digging holes and they were shooting them or just pushing them in. We don't know how many were buried alive. Half of them didn't get there. They were gassed either in the, in the um, backs of the vans or they were just holes dug and they were shot and thrown in. It's a terrible thing. It's always there with us. One day, a child sat on his grandpa's knee. I have some questions, Gramps, said he. Then ask away came the reply. To answer them, I will try. When will all the fighting cease? When will we all live in peace? When will we learn to love each other and stand together like sister and brother? Will racism and persecution ever die? How many more tears do we have to cry? Will all the homeless get a home? Will our kin be allowed to roam? When will this pandemic come to its end? When can we meet and hug a friend? I'm asking you as you are old and wise, but I am only your small grandchild. Now my grandson, good questions all. It will only change when we hear the call. There is only one answer I can say. Hopefully all will change one day. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day. As well as six million Jews, others, including those with disabilities, lost their lives under the Nazi regime in Germany. It's estimated that close to 250,000 disabled people were killed by the Nazis. What did you think as you and Rachel sat on the floor of the cattle truck as it left Paris? Do you think of the watches and clocks you had mended? Did you think of the tiny springs and w -w -w wheels? You with your magnifying glass in your eye, poring over the works, so that a monsieur or a madame could tell the time, correct to the exact second. Did you think of the smell of the sea and the push of the boat against the waves? How you and Rachel would stand on the deck, the wind in your faces as you sailed away. Did you look through the gaps in the slats on the side of the truck? Did you see farmers in fields, women selling clothes in a market? Did you call out? Did you push your hands through the gaps? Did the night come creeping in? Did you see a light from a window where people sat and ate their evening meal? Did you see the dark horror on Rachel's face? Did she see horror on yours? And did you shut her eyes? And did she shut yours? Thinking of children who shut their eyes to make the world go away. And then, behind your eyelids, did you think of the cattle that had once stood in the truck as they were taken away to the slaughterhouse? One day, I was looking at a map of Poland and my eye fell on the village of Oshik, where my grandmother's family came from. In the 1940s, my great uncle, Chaim Teitelbaum, was still living there with his wife and children. Peaceful life in a peaceful village. When the Nazis invaded Poland, they ordered all the Jews in the nearest town, Smigrod, and in all the surrounding villages, including Oshik, to move into the ghetto in Smigrod. And then, one day, the 7th of July, 1942, to be precise, they ordered all the Jews in the ghetto to congregate in the market square. And there, they loaded them up into lorries and drove them out into the nearby forest. In the forest, they had dug enormous pits. You can probably guess what I'm going to say next. They shot all the men, women and children into those, th th those pits. And 1,250 people were killed. This is the story of my family on one day, but this story could be repeated by many, many, many other families too. One day. One day. One day. One day. One day.
One day. Year 5 and 6 created a patchwork collage inspired by the Kinder Transport Memorial Quilt Exhibition. This project helped us to reflect on the one day that changed people's lives for better or worse. We hope that one day we can all live in peace. My drawing represents a broken heart being patched up by the positivity her birth mother sent her in letters from home. The letters and objects represent her memories and the bond that shouldn't be broken. The children in the boat are very sad because they had to leave their family and home behind. The rain represents their tears. The journey is from fear to peace. I have drawn a suitcase waiting alone by a train to show that many people did not make it out alive, but some did. My drawing shows a girl in the middle of a broken heart with her parents on one side reaching for her. On the other side is her foster parents. One day this girl will have to choose one family. My design shows your heart is full in Germany, but when you're on the train, your heart is broken. When you get to Britain, your heart is starts mending again. This project helped us to reflect on the one day that changed people's lives for better or worse. We hope that one day we can all live in peace. You may be asking, what can I do to make a difference, to challenge persecution? It was Vincent van Gogh who said, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Why not stand up to bullying, speak out against those who discriminate, accept people for who they are, and celebrate your differences rather than seeing them as something negative? As our world continues to move online, you may notice negativities following with it. The internet is an amazing platform to share our experiences, stories and thoughts. Discrimination doesn't belong online just as it doesn't belong anywhere else. Why not learn about diversity? Teach others your own cultures and traditions or discover someone else's. You can even break down barriers by learning a new language. You can support a number of organisations that already stand up to discrimination such as Dorset Race Equality Council, South West Dorset Multicultural Network, Amnesty International, Choose Love and many more. You can help these organisations through donating or raising money, but you can also sign petitions, write to your MP, attend events or marches, you can even create your own campaign or group to support those who are marginalised. Activism can take many forms. By bringing together our actions, we can form the change that we want to see one day. As I light this candle, I remember that genocide never just happens. You have to create a set of circumstances in which it can occur. You start by creating a them and us, Jews and Gentiles, blacks or whites, gay or straight, Hutus or Tutsis. You go on to discriminate, to deny civil rights or citizenship. You dehumanise those who are different. You refer to them as cockroaches or vermin. You are swamped by them. Then you organise, spread propaganda and create fear of the victim group. And then you begin your plan of persecution and extermination. And finally, perpetrators and later generations deny any existence of such a crime. I pledge and call on all of us to fight against the early signs, the them and us, the discrimination, the dehumanisation, the propaganda and the denial.